Hi everyone, welcome to Eden's Secret. Today we're making bath bombs. I've got my Hobbit mixer here. I've got a sieve. I've got some weighing scales. I've got a, a bowl. I've got carrier oil here, witch hazel. I've got some fragrance as well. Um, but I'm not using that fragrance today. I've got a measurer for my oils. My bicarb, my citric and my celeste are all over here on the right hand side and that's where they all stay permanently right okay so I'm just moving this back so you can see my weighing scales I'm going to pop those on and I'm weighing in grams Okay, so we want 2.4 kilos of bicarb. Now, because the bowl isn't very big, I do this in two stints. Now you'll notice that it's around about five cups full of bicarb here. Still gone over. There we are. Now when I come to do the citric, it's actually six cups, so citric acid must weigh less than bicarb does. So if you're doing the two to one method, um It's two cups of bicarb to one cup of citric acid. I always sieve my uh, bicarb and I always sieve my citric acid as well. So that's one lot. I need another lot in there. So going in for the next lot. Two. Three. Come on, just a drop. So it's five cups, as you can see. Now I usually wear my mask here but I'm not today because obviously I'll be very muffled. I'll show you the types of masks that I use because I am going to have to put the mask on now to put my SLS in, in this container. I don't sieve the SLS here. So obviously you can see my mask is well used because it's got colour on it but I like these Arco masks, they're really good quality. They're not cheap, they're about £5 each but they really do the job. So I'm going to pop that on now so I'm going to sound a little bit muffled. And gently, I'm going to add 36 grams of SLSA into my container. Again, very gently, I'm just going to tip that in into my bicarb like so. Now, I'm not going to mix the citric in yet, but I am going to measure the citric. One, two, three, four, five, and that's six there. So one, one, five, zero grams of citric acid. So we had 2.4 kilos of bicarb, 
36 grams of SLS here. You don't need to use SLS here if you don't want to. Uh, just scrap it. But you won't get any bubbles in your bath bomb if you do that. And 1150 grams of citric. So I'm just going to pop that to the side. Now popping our oil measure on, I'm going to tear that back to zero and I'm going to add in 24 grams of carrier oil. So you can use, you can use coconut oil, sweet almond oil, um, sunflower oil, olive oil, fractionated coconut, uh, apricot kernel oil there are absolutely loads of different ones you can use actually fine that's the easiest way just to get your little little one gram out there Okay, so we're going to just tip that straight into the powder, give it a jiggle to try and get all the drops out of there, so that when you pop it back on, it's actually at zero. If it's not, just tear it again, and then pop your fragrance in. We're going to pop 24 grams of fragrance in there. So going to put um, 40 grams of witch hazel. And that's going in. Turn your scale off because we don't need that anymore. And then I'm using the paddle. I used to have the whisk, uh, but that broke. I don't think the paddle's going to break. So I just lift that up, turn it on, and I always have the towel over the top. This just stops all the powder flying all over your soap room because the powder will cover everything So I've just turned it off just to scrape around the edges, scrape all anything that's stuck on the side, scrape it off there and then turn it back on. And I'll just leave that to mix away for a few minutes, maybe even five minutes, three to five minutes, something like that. And then we'll tip it out into the mixing container or the cat litter tray. Okay, so there's our mixture. I don't usually mix this, I'm just showing you, just wanted to show you it. Then I'm just going to tip it into my cat litter tray, which I got from Morrison's or Sainsbury's, I can't remember which one. 
I'll sound a lot better now where I've got my mask off. So I'm just going to pop that back on the mixer. And then before I add my citric acid, I'm just going to mix this in. Because there's always a bit of powder right on the bottom that doesn't get mixed in properly. So... My citric acid's getting a little bit lumpy. So I'm going to sieve it in, which I don't always sieve the citric acid, it just depends whether it's starting to get a bit lumpy. When you've had it for a little while, it can absorb moisture and um, it can get a little bit lumpy. You can do this with a hand mixer if you want to. Um, I'm not doing that today just because, um, you know, just, just for noise reasons. Uh, so I do it this way because it stays like powderish for a lot longer. And then, then that gives me more time uh, to make as many bath, bath bombs as I can. Uh, you can make about, well, these Instagram bath bombs, 3, 4, 2, 8, 3, 12, 16, 5, 20, 22, 24, 26. So you can make about 13 of these Instagram bath bombs with the amount that I've got in here. And they're quite big. They really are big bath bombs. If you see, like, compared to the size of my hand, it absolutely fills it. So they're massive. I think they're 10 by 10 centimetres. Um, if I'm making round bath bombs, I can actually get 14. So using a cloth or a piece of kitchen roll or something in between i've worked out that in between every single um bath bomb to wipe it out so we're just gonna pop some of the mixture in there and i'm gonna go right round the outside to make sure that all the mixture is pressed into the detail on the mold that's um, not flush and then just start filling it up now a lot of people just whack the mold on the worktop and I'm actually going to try that now because I think it'll be a lot easier then pressing it and pressing it and pressing it with your thumbs. I don't know if it's going to work, but let's have a go. I'm trying to turn it up now. Because what I'm trying to do is get the get it nice and flat on the bottom. Because if it's not flat, it'll crack. As I said the last time I did this, I probably shouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I'm, I should probably just turn it straight out, but I just want the edges to be nice and neat. Because I have got a few cracks in some of these, and I want to avoid that if I can. I'm just tapping the top of the mould gently, which seems to loosen it away quite well. And then gravity just pulls, lets it drop out of the mould. So let's, fingers crossed, hope this one works out all right. And you do need to just delicately, anything that's crumbling off, just delicately, delicately press it back in like so. 
frightened i hope it works um at the moment it looks neater than the others but i don't know we'll have to wait and see um getting sore thumbs this time i watched a film last night called the changeling i'm sure you've probably seen it uh, with Angelina Jolie. Oh, it's sad. It reminds me of a film called After the Promise. I don't know if you ever saw that. That was about um, a man with three children and his wife died. Lovely man, lovely family. And because he was at work all day, the authorities put the children in care and all sorts of horrible things happen to them you know it just shows what all the horrible things that happen um or used to happen hopefully they don't still happen uh but to some extent they probably will do um just all these horrible things happened to the kids while they were in care and then he eventually got his kids back and they just they weren't like they they weren't like they were when they left home at all i mean they were happy when they left not when they left but happy before they left and it was just so sad anyway this th this movie last night with angeline and jolie i've never seen it before um she goes out to work again it's set in the early 1900s and she works for telecommunications and she leaves her child home uh, while she has to go to work which was probably very common in the, those days it, I don't think it was against the law either back then to do things like that and when she came home the child had gone someone had abducted him but you didn't see that part and uh, I don't want to spoil the story, but all the horrible things that happened uh, from that moment, like the police not believing her and, you know, how corrupt the police and the mayor were. It's a true story, actually. Um, and then a priest or vicar or a pastor or a reverend, yeah, he was a reverend, um from a pre presbyterian church um started helping her and so did one of the the police and um yeah watch it it's a really good film it's on quite a long time That's better actually, that one. But will it crack? I don't know. You never know whether they're gonna crack until they do. I think that Changeling film is, is quite old. You know, she looks fairly young in it and so do all the other actors that are in it. Um. The bad man in it, well, there's a few bad men, but one of the bad men in it, uh, the one who takes the kids, he's um, he's in Ozark, um, and he looks really young in it, so it must be quite an old film. Right, so what I'm going to do before I put the next layer in, I'm going to squash this down. with my spoon just takes the pressure off your fingers and your thumbs and then it'll get it nice and tight you really need to get it tight into the corners and into uh you know the the detail of the mold I 
don't know, you know, everybody finds a way of doing things that just feels comfortable for them. And this way feels a bit more comfortable for me. And I'm trying to feel like the depth of the powder. It's it's actually easier to do, much easier to do round moulds than to do these these flat ones, which I never thought would be the case. Um, I thought rounds would be the hardest because you've got to press two parts together. And, you know, it's not easy to do round bath bombs either to get them to two parts to stick together. And, you know, then there's the releasing of them as well and you know and they can crack as well I mean all bath bombs can crack um, so yeah definitely more time consuming to do these flat moulds Did anybody see an old one of my bath bomb videos on Tyler from Lad Bible last night? Well, it'll be, by the time you see this video, it'll be two nights ago. Tyler on Facebook, um, the part of the Lad Bible group. Uh, I wish I could get views like that on my channel. It had, in the first hour, it had over 14,000 views. Could I wish I had that power? Hopefully someday it'll happen. I mean, Katie is absolutely phenomenal. Katie from Royalty Soaps, the view she's getting is absolutely unbelievable. I really never thought it possible from a soap maker. I didn't ever think that could be that much interest in a soap maker. But Katie's absolutely proved that it can be done. I'm since she hit a hundred thousand, our views have just absolutely gone through the roof. It's absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, I, I would absolutely love it if I could do that. So hopefully someday, when I think of like, you know, how the views that us soap makers used to get in the old days of soaping on YouTube, like 2010, I mean, the views that people are getting are really very, very improved back then. So between us, we are creating... Um, interest in, in making soap and bath bombs and whatever else we do by having these businesses and these channels. It seems like everybody has their different styles and ways of making videos like Ophelia Soapery, she's doing very, very well as well. She gets amazing views on her channel. I wouldn't want to be a great big massive channel though, like 20 million, that kind of thing, subscribers. And the money that's coming in, that literally would scare me, that amount of money. And then again, when you're a great big massive channel like Jeffrey Star, I mean, look at the look at the drama that goes on with them lot. I'm not saying the soaping community would be like that, but it's just they get a lot of negative attention as well. I 
I'm not scared of negative attention because it's gonna happen you know the more popular you get it's just gonna happen so it doesn't bother me in the slightest you know everybody knows it's just part of the the course and the sooner you get used to it the better Just any negativity, please, 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 don't let it bother you. Like, you know, some people don't like getting dislikes on their videos, but I think a lot of the time it's easy to click the dislike when you go to click the like. Um, it can be things like that. We're not going to be liked by everybody. Um, and I think the more popular you get, the more dislikes you're going to get. Um, I know it's easier said than done, you know, and I've been doing this a long time now, like 10 years I've been on YouTube. Well, I haven't, but I started ten year, over 10 years ago. Uh, I did take a long, long break, and that's the big mistake I made. You know, sometimes I think people write comments like that, nasty comments. They're just trying to be funny and amusing, you know, and get attention. It, it's not personal. I mean, it might be from some people, but it could only be personal from people who actually know you, couldn't it? I mean, a lot of the comments I get that are negative, they just honestly make me laugh. I, I just find them funny now. I think people get frightened that it's going to affect their business, and, and it doesn't really. There's always going to be more people that like you than dislike you. Unless you're Shane Dawson. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I mean, the first time I knew about him, I like it was literally the the Jeffrey Star Shane Dawson series that they did, and I, th I really liked that. But the more I watched Shane, the more I disliked him, and honestly, I just find him revolting now. Not even now, since all this has come out, I just. I don't know, I just couldn't get away with him. And I, I don't like Jeffrey now. And that is because of all that we've heard that has happened and what he's done in the past. He's just gonna survive anyway. He's, he's a really tough cookie. I think Shane is a bit more sensitive. Um, But Jeffrey, he won't care. He'll just keep going no matter what. And he will be a success because he's very, very driven. And just like the videos I've seen of Shane's, like his recent ones, not his old ones. I don't even find what he's doing is that interesting. Um, mostly standing in the kitchen he's, uh, at his kitchen counter for half of the video talking about what he's going to do um, Okay, so the, these are the colours that have been sat for a couple of days since I made them up. And as you can see, the colours separated uh, from the rubbing alcohol. But all you need to do is give them a good shake. And all that mica just mixes right back in. Uh, someone asked me the questions, will, will they keep like this? Yes, they will. 
they'll keep in the bottle for months um, and I know that because I've done that with uh, the older bottles I had so it just keeps them nice and fresh um, so you can make up quite a lot and just store it wherever you're going to store it as long as it's not in direct sunlight I think it'll be all right I mean that's that's what I've done I'm just wondering if this blue one here remember this dark hyacinth blue was the one that was matte it wasn't pearly at all I don't know if that has got some sediment on the bottom actually I'm looking at the bottom and oh yes it has got sediment it has all settled on the bottom let me have a look at these no the pink's fine the purple's fine that blue must be made up of something totally different to mica so let me see if I can sh actually show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, can you see in there? That's all the colour settled on the bottom, so that's going to be useless. Let's have a little spray and see what happens. So this one will need, there's still plenty of colour in there. So I can still use it, but that one definitely don't pre-mix. Just mix it as you're going to use it. Thank you. 
All right, we're getting down to the last four now. Uh, a couple of people have mentioned to me in the past about um, an air sprayer compressor, but I've actually got one. And I just prefer using these uh, glass bottles. Obviously, you can get a lot more colour in them if you're going to be spraying a lot uh, rather than filling and filling. I know you can actually get those... Um, air guns with bottles on as well I haven't got one of those mind you um, but I find this does just as good a job but each to their own Well, I didn't think to do that. Spray it and then put it on the kitchen roll. <laughs> Just realised as I'm getting to the last one that I could do that. I think this will probably be the very last time I ever do Instagram bath bombs on the channel. So I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, I just want to thank you all for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for liking, thanks for commenting, thanks for donating. If you're one of those who's donated to my channel, I'm very, very grateful. Any support is good support. Now we need to put the glitter on them. Okay, so instead of glitter, I actually put some mica in as well. So I'm just putting in, I've only got two bath bombs left to do, so I don't want to put too much in here. So I'm just putting a little bit of bright gold from Mineral Makeup Ingredients in there. A tinsy wincy bit of glitter just mix that in And then just paint it on, it actually works so much better than just the glitter on its own. So I've done them all like this, every single one. It's actually really, really satisfying painting bath bombs. Very, very enjoyable, very therapeutic. Rather time consuming if you're in a hurry, but if you're not, uh, you can literally just sit down uh, at your computer, pop some nice music on or watch what you want to watch and um, paint away to your heart's content. So I forgot to tell you that it took about half an hour to spray all my bath bombs so not it's not too time consuming spraying uh, but it is quite time consuming painting and there we are
Thank you.